Hello guys, in today's video, um, I'm going to be showing you how to use IDA and how it works. This tutorial is assuming you have a uh, IDA dump. If you do not have one, I suggest you wait until I post my next video, which should be out maybe in an hour or two, depending if I'm not busy. But anyways, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to open any IDA dump. We'll go with uh, 10.40, right? So this is my IDA dump. It's loading. Wait for it to open. Okay, so there's a couple of things uh, that are important to note. First off, you may notice on the side here where all my addresses are, or the functions, so to speak, they are all small. They're not like huge, like most of your offsets probably are, unless you're, you watched my how to make a dump video before this. So what you need to do is go to segments or edit, segments rebase program and type in 0x0 and hit okay that should give you the same as mine now now some simple ida plugins you may need and i'll show you where to get them is this one it is the ida exec function um importer and the way that works is exec functions are in a simple way how functions are intercepted you functions are intercepted when you functions are called using process event or whatever exact functions intercept that and then redirect straight to the actual function which is why we can become the middleman look at this exact function and then figure out where the real function is and hook that or something along the lines so I'm going to show you how to get the DLL, and I'll also upload them to a Discord I meant to put in probably the last few videos. But um, uh, I just kind of forgot to link it below. Okay, this link still works. So there's one in my server. I'll put that in there. So that's pretty useful. It's, uh, it's basically... you how you like insert the plugin is you just go to your program files IDA professional plugins and just put it right there just paste it in there and um how we will use it is hit edit plugins this and then we're gonna find where we dumped our sdk so for example this is where my 4.1 would be and then here are my IDA mappings folder. And this is what we would put into there, but obviously I'm not going to do that because the offsets will be wrong because this is not 10.40, right? But yes, this is, that's how the plugin would work. Um, now what we can do from there is if we wanted to find, let's say ready to start match address, Okay, can I spell please? Ready to start match. Right, hit F5. So F okay, yeah, I should have explained that. So when you're on this screen, it's your IDA view. This is the default view whenever you click on a function. How to decompile it to where it's readable C or C code at least, instead of this assembly code. We hit F5, and this shows us the almost C version of this. So here is our VFT index. Now what is a VFT index and what is a VFT? So in a, a U function or a U object, every, um, the first parameter always is going to be a V, v table. Right? It's 
all like in every u function the first uh, member i mean not parameter it's always going to be a v table and it'll be a void pointer pointer so why isn't this okay hold on. i need to like un unmake it this first and let's Okay, see, now it shows us the correct representation. It's getting the beat table and then it's accessing FC, which if we convert it to decimal, that is 252. And actually, wait, hold on. It may be cleaner for us to just make this a void pointer because then it looked like an actual table, I think. No? Okay, whatever. But yes, it's accessing 252, which is um, the function, like, think of it as an array. A V table is an array of, actually, I made a video on this. I don't know why I'm going so hard into explain it. But how we are going to use this to get us the previous thing, and also copy this. Don't copy that, because when it's in that form, it gets all weird. Um, just reset it. And also that was why, that's how you change types and local types are in here. Um, sorry, I forgot to explain that. So we're going to copy this index. We're going to go to our VFT because that's also what the IDA exact functions do. It names all your VFTs for you. So you just put in your class name, in our case it's, and we want to use the highest hierarchy so we can get the latest function. And our latest, our highest hierarchy is A4 game mode Athena. So we're going to, we're going to go to the VFT address and then we're going to add it plus our offset, our op index. Yeah. And here is our function, right? So that's going to be ready to start match. Now we could you we could either hook this function directly, and that would still be ready to start match, or we could virtual hook it, which I'm sure you've seen me do in the tutorials. I think at least once. Um, I don't personally see a difference, but the only thing that would matter is if you go into the VFT and it's a null sub then yes, you do have to hook it with the, uh, you do have to hook it with a V table because the address that it's accessing is zero. Or yeah, that you're trying to access would just be null or pointless to, to try and hook. So that is just kind of simply how to use execs, but some things are a little less easy so let's say tick flush right uh, okay what's that there's my tick flush okay maybe i've forgotten completely it is tick gameplay tag i know it was something with tick in it uh this could be it kind of looks like it a bit no, I don't think so. But um, here's an easier way. If we have, oh crap, uh, ignore that. Trust me, there was reason to that. Uh, go to Epic Games and go to Unreal Engine. And if you don't have this yet, all you have to do is attach your GitHub account to your Epic Games account and it should allow you to have access to their source code. So let's do whatever, okay. We're gonna search for tick blush. All right, so now we can see here, okay, so we have a stat here. So most likely if we can search for that. It should show up. Yes, this is our string now. And boom, we should have our tick flush. 
Now for this, for some reason, it doesn't seem to have uh, delta seconds, but it's fine. Right? Um, sorry, hold on. I'm low-key a bit tired, I won't lie to you. Anyways, this is what it looks like. And you should, oh, excuse me. This is how you find tick flush. So you can name that if you want. It's in to name things, by the way. So now we can find things similarly, like just string references, right? That's what we're doing right now. We're finding things with string references and make sure it's in the proper class. Like it should say, a uh, unit driver set world, not whatever the hell this is. And you're going to want to look at the CPP file so we can actually look at the source code, not just the fucking declaration. Let me just. Ouch. Ow. Okay. So this is sort of what? Interesting. Okay, sorry. So we're gonna search for references to this, which unfortunately requires us to just search set world, right? Because we want we want overrides to this. And not to forget, um there are patterns which you can use like SigMaker, it's just a plugin. I think it's also in the server where you can make signatures. So you can search, like let's say you found TickFlush and you believed, okay, well this should probably show up on every single build like this. So we're gonna do SigMaker, create unique address. And then on the other, the new IDA dump of a later build, we would just do search for signature or if you're feeling nice, you could actually do it in C++ instead of doing it in IDA. So yeah, a little quick thing. Um, I have no idea why I can't find it right now, but it's okay. There's multiple like different ways you can find things. Uh, a technique I used to use when I was still learning and didn't know all the patterns was look at offsets from other builds and look at look at X refs, right? So if we click X here, we can see there's a call and boom, this gives us the closest thing to tick flush, right? We know this is tick flush and on another build, we could just search for that string ref. So that's an easy way how we could do that. So do things like that. That should really get you kind of familiar with IDA. And then you can do actual reversing when you get to that point. Um, but, and this would be a little easier if I actually made a template game and then like had just look through the source code on there because it's a lot faster and it's not cancerous, but um it's okay so yeah that's what you're gonna want to do oh, i hope that makes sense um i hope i'm making sense honestly but yeah that should be a pretty simple tutorial uh i don't want to make this video too long it's already like 15 minutes long so uh goodbye guys uh Join the server in the description.